of Tunnel Vision. I'm Katie Boggs with you right here inside the Coliseum. And wow, what a season it has been so far. In 12 weeks, we've seen this USC team go from nationally ranked to losing or watching rather their head coach being fired and now they're back on the national stage as they get set to upset the number four team in the country the Stanford Cardinal and we're going to bring you all the action live right here inside the Coliseum on our official pregame show Tunnel Vision. Well, the USC Trojans are eager to prove they have what it takes to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this number four ranked team in the country, one of the most physically dominating teams as well. And because of that, well, this game, I have to say, the first sold-out game of the year for the USC Trojans. And we're seeing a uh, Coliseum that's filling up way more than what we've seen at all so far this year. Typically, we start the show and it's only the student section that we see filled up. But now you're seeing the entire place filling up and we're hoping to see all 93,000 plus seats full before we start. Now take a live look here at the field. The team already made their way down the tunnel. They're all out there right now practicing, warming up. You'll see one-on-ones, you'll see seven-on-sevens. USC head coach Ed Ogeron's out there in the middle as well, and this week he said it's going to be a dogfight. Stanford coach David Shaw said they expect it to be a barn burner, so everyone knows it's going to be an extremely physical battle for both of these teams, and it's going to be a fun one to watch as well. Now, Kickoff is set for 5.12 p.m., but a lot's happened today before that. Take a look at the pregame schedule. This is what circulates within the athletic department. We get to share it with you here. A long breakfast. Interim head coach Ed Odron's known for uh, really making those meals count and a family time together with the team. So two and a half hours for breakfast. They have their wake-up call, team meetings, then the pregame meal, clap session. They departed for the Memorial Coliseum made their way right here to the peristyle at the other end and that is the Trojan walk and we always get here early to set up so we can bring you that Trojan walk and it was a busy one here today with all of the fans plus it's homecoming as well so at the other end of the uh, Coliseum that's where a lot of the alumni are before the game so Trojan walk was busy let's go ahead and roll that to show everyone what happened here just a couple hours ago. So there's the team buses that pull up just as they always do. We used to see that back in the Pete Carroll days when those buses were rocking back and forth. So that's always fun for the fans to see. There's interim head coach Ed Oger on the team making their way down. Like I said, more fans than we've seen at that Trojan walk all season long. And as they make their way to the peristyle entrance at the Coliseum, down the stairs, across the field, something else Coach O started when he took over as head coach. The entire team meets at the center of the field. They invite their family to come down as well and they all pray together. And again, Coach O said something that's important to him is that all of these players know how he feels about them, that he acts like a father figure to all of them, that they're really his son. So that's why you're seeing that prayer circle. All right, now we're back to a live shot of the tunnel. There's the band. Now I have to say, We've got an idea of what's going to happen here today, but we never know exactly when that band is going to erupt. So as soon as it happens, I will be quiet for a moment and uh, we will bring you the band live. Plus during that time, we have a V Channel exclusive to bring you of Buck Allen. So that'll be coming up later as well. As you're taking a live look at the field, just to give you an idea of what's coming up here on Tunnel Vision today, you'll hear from Coach O, you'll see some uh, USC video exclusives. We'll catch up with Matt Liner, who's leading the Trojans down the tunnel. And we'll bring you all the action live as the team warms up and we get closer and closer to kickoff, which is again set for 5.12 p.m. on ABC here on the West Coast. Now, 
that team will be heading back into the locker room pretty soon for final meetings before this game kicks off. But first, we want to bring you a channel exclusive so you can take a look at all the prep that goes into the locker room. Take a look. Everybody's just kind of doing what they have to do. We're unpacking bags, uh, putting jerseys on the shoulder pads, and just getting everything ready for uh, for the players' get her. Just kind of all the last-minute uh, details, just trying to make everything right. So when the players arrive, everything's set to go, and we're ready to go and play the, the best football we can. When these players come in here, it looks like what they're like what they think it's going to look like. So so you know nothing, no no surprises in here. I mean we're all business in here. This is this this is it. This is your standard double locker. You know you got the. We, you got the dual programs, dual bags, dual cleats. We could actually work to tuck this guy in back here a little bit more. Ah, there we go. Standard single, you got Charles Burks right here, number 45. We got a big day from him. We got a, uh, you know, uh, the shoulder pad is extremely svelte. I mean, that's a good looking shoulder pad. Yeah, slightly different. The shoulder pad is facing us instead of facing in. Um, you know, we got his, uh, He's got a couple pair of gloves. The game gloves are going to go on top of his old gloves so he knows which ones are newest. Uh, yeah, helmet's on the right, pants bottom left. Uh, mouthpiece goes in the helmet, loop back right. It's what it is. Basically, I'm just going through and double checking all the decals, make sure we have everything on the helmet. That's good, good for the game. And then also uh, just touching up all the heavy gashes. Covers up the gray, puts, puts a little red on there. I'm putting on Kenny Bigelow's jersey. As you can see, there's a shroud inside, so there's the uh, Velcro. These are always the hardest part because we, we want to make sure that this, there's no wrinkles on the sides. And there's definitely no wrinkles on the front here. One of those perfect form-fitting jerseys. We've always taken pride in, the, in our setups uh, to the point where it's actually been noticed by BSPN, uh, Fox, uh, a couple of news channels. They've, they've shot the locker room because it looks like a museum piece when we get done. Again, it's, it's just the Jamokes taking pride in what they do. Now, as the team's warming up, somewhere in that mix, you probably saw Javoris Allen, better known to the team as Buck Allen, made a huge impact in last week's explosive win over Cal, scoring three touchdowns. And there's much more to this incredible player than what you may know just from seeing him out there on the field. So now we're going to bring you an official exclusive on Buck Allen. Then I'll be back live to talk with one of the uh, USC personnel behind this video. Take a look. Allen again. Big hole in the middle. Javaris Buck Allen. Still in bounds. Touchdown. Third touchdown of the night for Allen. I mean, when I was little, I used to play outside by myself with a pine cone like it was a football. So, you know, I played a young, you know, I, I love the game. But he has tremendous work ethic. Uh, Bucky's Buck is one of the hardest working guys on our team. Javorius Allen, or Buck, as the world has come to know him, has burst onto the college football scene. In the last month, he has made the game look easy. But easy is a change of pace for Allen. I grew up in um, Mississippi, Florida, but you know, that's outside of Tallahassee, like a country town. I was born by the river. Allen was raised by his grandmother in a small town 15 miles northeast of Tallahassee. She was his backbone, raising Allen, his brother, and two sons of her own. He didn't have a father figure, had a complicated relationship with his mother, 
and had just about every reason to begin walking down the wrong road. My older brother, uh, before he got locked up, you know, he was basically my father figure. And, you know, he taught me a lot. You know, I kind of, you know, grew up kind of fast, you know, being with him and, you know, being raised with my grandmother, you know, I grew up kind of fast. Most kids growing up in similar circumstances get lost. With few options, fewer role models, and no roadmap, rising up out of life circumstances is life's greatest challenge. But through football, Allen was the master of his own destiny. And one day, you know, I, I, he called me and I talked to him, and you know, he was like, I heard you doing good. And he was like, I know you got a chance. You know, what do you think about for college? I was like, man, I don't even think I want to go to college. And he was like, what? He hung up and I guess he broke the phone and like two weeks later, you know, I talked to him and, you know, and he was like, so man, why you don't want to go to college? You got a, you know, free opportunity to do some things, you know, some kids don't even know, dream of doing. And, you know, he told me that we had a long talk and, you know, it kind of hit me and I was like, you know, this is the turning point, you know, I got to make things happen. Alan started life on his own, 3,000 miles from home and everything he'd ever known. He'd become the first member of his family to attend college, but just signing at USC didn't mean his journey was over. Arriving late in the fall semester, Allen was forced to redshirt his freshman season and sit out a year on the field, taking away the only part of his life that felt comfortable. Um, I got here at ASU week, and that's when it really hit me. You know, you're in college now, and, and I remember I had American history class, and I had a, a midterm due. And it's like, you, you got to pick four pictures from the seven, I meant like the 60s and write about them, man. You know, I did I did three, I wrote about them, and it was like 12, 30 at night. And I was like, man, I don't know if I can finish this. So boom, so I go on the internet, find a picture, and I just copy and paste it, boom. Turn it in, you know, thinking I'm, you know, good. And like two days later, I get this email. And, you know, that right then, I was like, man, college not for me. I think what's really, remarkable about Buck is how quickly he recognized that he needed assistance and then how quickly he was willing to engage in accepting support and assistance and then how intensely he's willing to work. With help from his learning specialist and the Stevens Academic Center, Allen was starting to thrive in class. But while his grades rose, his placement on the depth chart did not. Midway through the 2013 season, however, Buck finally got his chance. The timing was right. He had an opportunity to uh, capitalize on the, the situation when he got his turn to go in, and when he got his opportunity, he did. First and goal from his side of the way. Everyone is out for the touchdown. But I knew, you know, I had to put in the work, and you know, I had something to prove. Really, the Arizona game, you know, I scored in two touchdowns, and you know, and you know, like, you know, that was that was a confident booster for me. You know, it meant a lot. In the last two games, Allen has scored six touchdowns. Against Cal, he ran for 135 yards on six carries, becoming the first Trojan to top the 100-yard rushing mark on six or fewer carries since 1954. You know, Coach Robinson said today, you know, every day pick something, you know, you want to work on. Like, you always can be better, you know, and I'm never satisfied, and I don't think I ever will until I reach the next level. Probably then won't be satisfied. And so, you know, I'm going to stay hungry and always work hard. This Saturday, USC takes on number four Stanford in a battle big enough to bring college game day to town. Buck Allen is expected to carry the feature role in the Trojans' rushing attack, but the hype doesn't faze him. After all, it's just football. And no matter what the outcome this weekend, he'll carry on. It's been a long journey. It's been a long time coming, like Coach O said. You know, and I, I knew, you know, a change gonna come. Change gonna come. Oh, yes it will. Well, as you're watching that, the USC Trojans made their way up the tunnel to the locker room 
for the last time before they come back onto the field for kickoff. But before we do that, I have Sarah here with me, who was the voice of that video, one of the bloggers for the official USC blog, and can I give away your other real identity? She's also one of the girls that is tweeting you and talking to you during the live chats and feeds that we do as well. So she plays a big part in all of this. And we want to ask her a couple questions about that video to give you an even better insight uh, to Buck Allen. So I have to ask, him being from Florida, most kids go to the SEC. What made him decide USC? You know, for Buck, uh, he was attracted to a lot of those schools, but after he took his visit to USC, he went home and had a conversation with his grandma that really made his decision. She told him, you know, one day, Buck, you're going to have to start a life on your own somewhere new, and for him, he just knew that meant he needed to come to L.A. And was there anything else that maybe you learned about Buck? Because some fans may not know him that well. He's not a senior, so I may not know him as well as they want to yet. So what else is there about him that maybe you learned doing that video? I think one thing, and you can kind of see it in the video, but uh, Buck has an amazing perspective on his life. He's really taken lessons from what he's went through and then applied them on the football field, in the classroom, and just as a person. He's incredibly mature for his age and, um, and just for where he is in life, and that's something that's really benefited him all around. Well, Sarah, I have to say, great job on the video. Literally made me want to cry. Makes you proud to be a Trojan. Is there a chance that maybe we, uh, USC fans will be seeing more videos like this? You know, we hope so. we got to find those good stories, but we would love to bring those to the Trojan family. Well, great. Well, Sarah, thanks for coming on the show with us. I have to let her go so she could go back and chat with you all pretty soon. But first, speaking of Buck Allen, we want to bring you the top five plays from the Cal game last week. And you can probably guess all of those touchdowns of his made the top five. Take a look. away all together still on his feet he's at the 20 10 5 and he's in the end zone for a touchdown USC oh my Buck Allen can really run the ball it looked like he was going to be tackled for maybe a short gain of five or six and then all the way down the field there were guys that had a chance to get him never got a full head of steam up but they never did catch him Wobbling kick caught by Aguilar, and he's got all kinds of room. Gets to the 35-40, up the sideline. He's only got the punter to beat at the 40. Step back in, and he'll go all the way. Touchdown, Nelson Aguilar. Touchdown, USC. Handoff, and it's Buck Allen who gets away at the 30, 40. Up the sideline to the 30, to the 20, to the 10. And Buck Allen has done it again. Oh. 79 yards, touchdown, USC. Oh, there's a punt block, and Josh Shaw waiting for it, catches it, and he'll walk into the end zone. Touchdown, USC! Soma Vanuku got in there, blocked the punt. It popped straight up in the air. Shaw caught it at about the 12-yard line, and the Trojans are on the board again. Aguilar drifting back to this punt from Leninger, takes it at the six-yard line, steps back up to the 20, gets to the 30, to the 40, cuts it across the field to the 50. He might go all the way, and he will. 94 yards, I believe. We'll call it 92, and it's a touchdown. Nelson Aguilar has just won Pac-12 Special Team Player of the Week honors. Touchdown, USC, his second punt return for a touchdown of the day. How do you do? Well, as you're watching the top five plays, everyone here in the Coliseum was watching the Friday night video, which is what the players see, well, on Friday nights to get them pumped up for today's game. We're going to bring you that video in just a bit, but first, we wanted to show you how the Coliseum is filling up here in the first sold-out game of the 2013 season. Max capacity here at the Coliseum, just over 93,000, and on average so far this year, USC has seen somewhere in 50 50,000 range, which ranks about 27th nationally, if I remember that correctly. But now you could see that is completely different. I have to tell you, uh, USC said this week that they are looking forward to playing in front of a full Coliseum, and who wouldn't, right? And they found out Thursday that it was indeed a sellout, which gave them even more of that uh, enthusiasm and boost that they're looking for as they look to derail this uh, fourth-ranked Stanford Cardinal team. And Coach O actually showed players film this week from the Pete Carroll era when the crowd was sold out. And uh, Cody Kessler actually told the media this week, you see the TV copies and there's not one empty seat. We want people to get excited for USC football like that again. And this 
is the time for it. Now I have to tell you, USC played Stanford before a sold out crowd at the Coliseum in 2011. And many of you may recall what happened in that game that went into triple overtime, 56-48. And for the past four games, it's ended in Stanford's favor. But this time around, USC wants to change that up. And we caught up with Coach O just before he went up to the locker room for the first time earlier today. And uh, we're going to bring that to you so you could see what he had to say about this sold-out game. Well, Coach, a couple games into the season, no one would have expected SC would be in the position to upset the number four team in the country. Yet here we are on a national stage in front of a sold-out crowd at the Coliseum. What do you have to do to keep surprising everyone and pull off the victory tonight? Well, we just need to play all type of football, really run the ball well, tackle well. It's going to be a physical football game. But most of all, have fun and play as a unit. And you mentioned physical. That's been the word all week long for both of these teams. You're facing a defensive line that's extremely physical, good secondary play. So how do you get guys like Marquise Lee open and Cody Kessler be able to get them for those big explosive moments? We're going to have to protect the quarterback. They're very good pass rushers. We're also good pass rushers. They see it every day. We just got to pick and choose our spot. But in order to win the game, we have to run the ball. And I have to ask, because this team prides themselves on being able to intimidate teams for 60 minutes, yet I haven't seen a single USC player intimidated at all this week. So how have you been able to instill that type of confidence in this team? Well, it's about a mindset of who we are. We are see, and it's not a cocky mindset, but nobody's coming in here to intimidate us. Great. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Fight on. Welcome back. You're taking a live look at the crowd as every seat continues to fill up here inside the Memorial Coliseum. 18 minutes away from kickoff that set, set rather for 5 12 p.m on abc on the west coast and uh until then we've still got more to bring you right here live now i'm sorry i just sat that down as you were coming to me um i have all my papers all the time with me so that way you have an idea of uh or i could bring you all the notes on what's coming up so uh, we're going to roll to our game day video to show you what all these fans that are now inside the Coliseum, what they've been up to all day, because they've had a busy morning since 6 a.m. So uh, go ahead and take a look at our quick game day feature, and then we'll be back to bring you the band live on the field. USC and the crowd goes wild. But you may have actually caught there. He uh, in that little sword fight they had, he got a little nicked up right there on the chin. So um, shed a little blood for picking USC. But you know what? It could very well pay off. And uh, Trojan Band is now out there on the field. Huge cheer as soon as they went out. So you can take a live look at what's happening on the field. Both of the teams up in the locker room right now. And as you see that count down the top left-hand corner of your screen, just 16 minutes to kick off. I want to remind you, during the game, you could stay right there at usctrojans.com and be a part of our live chat. And right after the game, we will bring you the press conference live. So you no longer have to wait to see it later. Uh, you could catch it all live right on the USC Trojan Game Day app or at usctrojans.com. 
Now again, it's going to be an epic battle between these two Pac-12 teams, and every year it is just like that. In fact, uh, Stanford's head coach David Shaw was saying about the Trojans earlier in the week, he said, honestly, in the seven years I've been here now, I think five of them have gone down to the wire. He said, we expect the same thing. I don't think anybody in our conference is surprised at how well they're playing. Good schemes, good coaches, they're healthy and dangerous. And healthy is just that. Marquise Lee is healthy. Got the entire receiving core that is there now. Guys like Buck Allen who are really stepping up, making huge plays. And speaking of plays, head coach Ed O'Dron has said just about every day this week, that they will need that big explosive play which could really be a game changer tonight. Other thing that's been a huge storyline how both of these teams are so physical and yes there's going to be battles all across the field but the biggest battle could be right there at the line of scrimmage. Coach O said earlier in the week whoever wins that battle is going to win the game and there's a big chance that can happen. Well right now uh, every fan here is on their feet as the fight on song is going on right there on the field. A lot of cheers happening as well. And now just 14 minutes away from kickoff. Now, Stanford's coming into uh, this game today at the Coliseum with a lot of confidence from their win over number three, Oregon. But our USC Trojans are also coming in with a lot of confidence and we've got some five-year seniors here who have lost to Stanford all four years that they've been here and if you were watching the ESPN game day show earlier today you saw some of them saying how they cannot lose for a fifth year right now. Now as we get closer and closer to kickoff, right now the USC Trojans are playing America the Beautiful on the field. Then they will go to the national anthem and then it will be just a few minutes before your USC Trojans make their way back down yelling wartime as they come through that tunnel led by USC alum Matt Leinert today. We haven't seen him here in the tunnel yet so it might be the first time we see him as those curtains open up and he comes down that tunnel. Well, as the band finishes America the Beautiful and gets ready for the national anthem, we're going to bring you the video that all the fans right here in the Coliseum saw just a few minutes ago. It's a Friday night video. Take a look. You guys can go down in history. You can do what has not been done in a long, long time. Everybody putting the cleats on. Everybody got the pads on when they walk out there. Both teams. But the difference between the goods and the great is called mentality. That's the mentality. What is that? That says I play every single play. I play every single down. And the mentality is, is that I am a tiger. Caught by Aguilar, and he's got all kinds of room. Gets to the 35, 40, up the sideline. He's only got the punter to beat at the 40. Step back in, and he'll go all the way. Touchdown, Nelson Aguilar. Touchdown, USC. Everything you practice for, every play you watch, every film you watch is for this moment. Screen pass to Red, trips and stumbles, maintains his balance, walks into the end zone. Touchdown, USC. If we go out there today, it's every single second. It's every single play. What are they going to say about you tonight? Tonight, guys, the pride. You got to have pride tonight. Tonight, the world needs to know who you are. It's your house. You will protect this house, and you will do what you have to do to be champions. This one game, under the lights tonight, you got to go out there and operate as one. Looking that way and sacked back at the 39 yard line by Kennard. Kessler drops to throw a screen. Buck Allen gets away at the 40, up the sideline to the 30. They won't catch him. It's a touchdown. There are 86,400 seconds in a day, and how you use those are critical. And what you do today is going to see me who you are. Be phenomenal. Tonight is the night to be phenomenal or be forgotten. Cut block. 
And Josh Shaw waiting for it, catches it. He'll walk into the end zone. Touchdown, USC! Soma Vanuku got in there, blocked the punt. Cuts it across the field to the 50. He might go all the way, and he will! Excessive number of discount. Greatness is never on sale. Greatness is never half off. It's all or nothing. It's all day, every day. Tonight, guys, tonight, you can see me in a place in history tonight. Tonight, tonight, be phenomenal or be forgotten. Well, can the USC Trojans prove they have what it takes to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the number four ranked Stanford and come out on top, ending that four-game winning streak that the Stanford have right here at the Coliseum? We'll see in just a few minutes. The USC Trojan marching band is out on the field playing what is known as the greatest battle cry in college football conquest right now. As they do so, the team will be coming out of the locker room any minute, and we're going to bring you all of that live so you you and only you, no one else gets to hear this, will hear that battle cry, will hear war time as they come down the tunnel. And don't forget, you could stay part of our live chat at usctrojans.com during, during the game, rather. And uh, you could also tune right back in after the game for the live press conference on the USC Trojan app or at usctrojans.com. So it's going to be a great game, expected to be a great battle that comes down to just a few few points and we're going to see it all live right here in just a few minutes. The fans are all cheering for the marching band. When they finish playing Conquest, those curtains close and it's time to go. So I enjoy the game everyone. Fight on and beat the farm. Football is a nasty physical game. 